This is a community-supported legal education channel. Find out how you can support our mission at the links in the description below. A plaintiff has sued Mashable for copyright infringement after Mashable used their photo by embedding their public Instagram post. So the question is, is embedding via the approved application programming interface on Twitter or Facebook or in this case, Instagram, is that copyright infringement? So here is the caption of the lawsuit brought by plaintiff Stephanie Sinclair versus Ziff Davis and Mashable in the Southern District of New York. Judge Kimba M. Wood grants the motion to dismiss from Mashable dismissing the plaintiff's complaint. And Judge Wood writes, Mashable posted one of plaintiff's copyrighted photographs on its website. The court finds that Mashable used plaintiff's photograph pursuant to a valid sublicense from Instagram. Plaintiff is a professional photographer who owns an exclusive United States copyright in the image titled Child Bride Mother Child Marriage in Guatemala. Plaintiff also maintains an account on Instagram, a photograph and video sharing social media platform. Plaintiff posted a copy of the photograph to her Instagram account, which is a public account viewable by anyone. On March 11th, 2016, an employee of Mashable contacted plaintiff via email and sought to license the photograph for use in an article about female photographers to be published on Mashable's website. Mashable offered plaintiff $50 for licensing rights to the photograph. Plaintiff did not accept Mashable's offer. On March 16th, 2016, Mashable published an article about female photographers on its website, which included a copy of the photograph. But Mashable used a technical process called embedding to incorporate the photograph into the article. Embedding allows a website coder to incorporate content such as an image that is located on a third party server into the coder's website. When an individual visits a website that includes an embed code, the user's internet browser is directed to retrieve the embedded content from the third party server and display it on its website. As a result of this process, the user sees the embedded content on the website even though the content is actually hosted on a third party server rather than on the server that hosts the website. Here, Mashable embedded in its article the copy of the photograph that plaintiff had previously uploaded to her Instagram. Instagram uses a service called an Application Programming Interface, or API, to enable users to access and share content posted by other users whose accounts are set to public modes. Pursuant to certain Instagram policies, users can use the API to embed Instagram posts in their websites. That is exactly what happened here. Mashable used the API to embed in the article the copy of the photograph that plaintiff previously posted to her public Instagram account. Account. Plaintiff demanded that defendants take down the copy of the photograph from the article and compensate plaintiff for infringing on her copyright. Defendants refused to do so. Plaintiff brought this copyright suit against defendants. Defendants moved to dismiss. Defendants contend that Mashable used the photograph pursuant to a valid sublicense from Instagram, so its use of the photograph does not infringe plaintiff's copyright. A copyright owner may license his or her rights in copyrighted material, including the rights of use, distribution, and sublicensing to one or more parties. A copyright owner who permits a licensee to grant sublicenses cannot bring an infringement suit against a sublicensee so long as both licensee and sublicensee act respectively within the terms of their license and sublicense. Here, plaintiff granted Instagram the right to sublicense the photograph and Instagram validly exercised that right by granting Mashable a sublicense to display the photograph. By creating an Instagram account, plaintiff agreed to Instagram's terms of use. Plaintiff concedes that she is bound by the terms of use. The terms of use state that by posting content to Instagram, the user grants to Instagram a non-exclusive, fully paid and royalty-free 
transferable, sub-licensable, worldwide license to the content that you post on or through Instagram subject to their privacy policy. Pursuant to the privacy policy, users can designate their accounts private or public and can change these privacy settings as they wish. All content that users upload and designate as public is searchable by the public and subject to use by others via Instagram's API. The API enables its users to embed publicly posted content in their website. Thus, because plaintiff uploaded the photograph to Instagram and designated it as public, she agreed to allow Mashable as Instagram's sub-licensee to embed the photograph in its website. Plaintiff advances a number of objections to this interpretation of her agreements with Instagram, but none are persuasive. First, Plaintiff argues that Mashable's failure to obtain a license to use the photograph directly from Plaintiff means that Mashable should not be able to obtain a sublicense from Instagram to use the photograph. Plaintiff's right to grant a license directly to Mashable and Instagram's right as Plaintiff's licensee to grant a sublicense to Mashable operate independently. Mashable was within its rights to seek a sublicense from Instagram when Mashable failed to obtain a license directly from Plaintiff. Just as Mashable would be within its rights to again seek a license from Plaintiff, perhaps at a higher price, if Plaintiff switched her Instagram account to a private mode. Second, Plaintiff argues that the court cannot take judicial notice of the meaning of Instagram's agreements and policies because they are complex and subject to different interpretations. Although the court takes judicial notice of the existence of the agreement and policies, the court does not purport to take judicial notice of their meaning. The meaning of these contracts is a question of law for the court rather than a question of fact for which the principles of judicial notice would be applicable. Next, plaintiff claims the agreements between Instagram and plaintiff cannot confer a right to use the photograph upon Mashable because Mashable is not an intended beneficiary of any of the agreements. But Mashable need not be an intended beneficiary of the agreements by which plaintiff authorized Instagram to sublicense the photograph in order to receive a valid sublicense from Instagram. Indeed, plaintiff authorized Instagram to grant a sublicense to, among other things, anyone who uses Instagram's API. Whether Mashable is an intended beneficiary would only matter if Mashable were attempting to enforce one of the agreements between Instagram and plaintiff, which Mashable is not. Plaintiff also contends that her authorization to Instagram to sublicense the use of the photograph is invalid because it was created by a series of complex, interconnected documents. Specifically, the terms of use established that plaintiff grants Instagram a sublicensable right to use, but the scope of the sublicense is detailed fully in Instagram's privacy policy and platform policy. Under California law, this practice is accepted. When one document incorporates another by reference, the original agreement and those referred to must be considered and construed as one. While Instagram could certainly make its user agreements more concise and accessible, the law does not require it to do so. Plaintiff also contends that the agreements do not convey a valid sublicense because they are circular, are incomprehensible, and contradictory. But plaintiff fails to identify any inconsistent, let alone unenforceable, terms in Instagram's agreement. Plaintiff claims it is contradictory for Instagram to simultaneously demand that users respect the intellectual property rights of others when uploading content to Instagram, while also granting those users a right to share other users' public posts containing copyrighted material. Plaintiff misses the distinction between a user's initial uploading of content to Instagram and a user's subsequent sharing of content that has already already been uploaded to Instagram. In the former scenario, a user may not upload content to Instagram if doing so would violate the intellectual property rights of another. In the latter, users must comply with Instagram's terms governing the sharing of content. However, there is no concern about a copyright violation because the user who initially uploaded the content has already granted Instagram the authority to sublicense the use of public content to users who share it. These requirements pose no contradiction and enable copyright holders to avoid unlicensed sharing of their work by choosing not to publicly post their copyrighted material on Instagram. Plaintiff also contends that Instagram violated the terms of its license by granting Mashable a sublicense to sell the photograph, but 
neither plaintiff nor Instagram has sold the photograph to anyone. Instead, Instagram granted Mashable a sublicense to embed the photograph on its website, and Mashable exercised its right pursuant to that sublicense. Finally, plaintiffs argue that it is unfair for Instagram to force a professional photographer like plaintiff to choose between remaining in private mode on one of the most popular photo sharing platforms in the world and granting Instagram a right to sublicense her photograph to users like Mashable. Unquestionably, Instagram's dominance of photograph and video sharing social media, coupled with the expansive transfer of rights that Instagram demands from its users, means the plaintiff's dilemma is a real one, but by posting the photograph to her public Instagram account, plaintiff made her choice. This court cannot release her from an agreement she made. Defendants contend that plaintiff fails to state a claim against Ziff Davis. They are correct. Because corporations and their subsidiaries are legally distinct, the legal relationship between, in this case, Ziff Davis and Mashable is insufficient to state a claim for copyright infringement against Ziff Davis, the parent company. A parent corporation can be liable only if there is a substantial continuing involvement by the parent, specifically with respect to the allegedly infringing activity of the subsidiary. Here, plaintiff has not pled facts that, if true, would establish Ziff Davis's involvement in the allegedly infringing activity. Plaintiff alleges that Ziff Davis owns Mashable and that legal notices on Mashable's website, such as privacy policy, terms of use, cookie policy, etc., direct users to Ziff Davis's corresponding policies. Plaintiff further alleges that Mashable's copyright policy directs individuals with copyright claims to contact Ziff Davis's copyright agent, and that Mashable lists Ziff Davis as its copyright agent. None of these facts establish that Ziff Davis had any involvement in Mashable's allegedly infringing activities beyond the bare fact of corporate ownership. For instance, Plaintiff does not claim that Ziff Davis had any role in contacting Plaintiff, posting the article, or embedding the photograph in the article. Plaintiff therefore fails to state a claim against Ziff Davis. For the foregoing reasons, the second amended complaint is dismissed with prejudice, which means it can't be filed again. The clerk of court is directed to close the case. All pending motions are moot. So order Judge Kimba M. Wood, United States District Judge for the Southern District of New York. So it's a relatively simple case. If you didn't want to be bound by Instagram's ability to sublicense your copyrighted works, then you simply don't upload your important works to Instagram. But it is a conundrum, like the court says. Sites like Twitter and Instagram and others, Flickr, for example, is that is, is this Flickr still a thing? Um, are significant websites in distributing photos and videos through social media. Even here on YouTube, we are bound by YouTube's terms of service or end user license agreement or community guidelines or ad policy, etc. And every one of these services has a slightly different policy. Many of them do actually take some sort of copyright rights away from you, either through a non-exclusive license when you upload something to Facebook or or Instagram, etc. Um, you have granted some kind of license to them to use your work, display your work, allow others to share your, your work, etc. You might still own a copyright, as in you own the exclusive license, you own the exclusive copyright, and you can do with your photograph or video what you want, but you're still subject to the agreement that you made with Facebook or with Instagram. And so don't upload your work there if you don't want to give up the, the licensing rights. Vimeo, for example, and other video sharing sites that you pay for up front might have a different set of terms so that they don't own as much of your copyright as, as Instagram or Twitter or Facebook might. So in this case, if you are the if you are Mashable, you're in the clear. Just make sure that you're embedding tweets. Make sure that you're embedding the Instagram posts, etc., instead of copying the photos outright. Now, I don't know if that necessarily saves everybody from copyright infringement. You're not going to be able to print an embedded Instagram post in your magazine or newspaper, but it does mean that embedding on a website seems to be in the clear as long as you're following the embedding policy of the the site that you're 
embedding from. So if Instagram has an API and allows you to embed from the API, then just use the API and don't make some end run around it, or at least read the terms and the privacy policy and make sure that you're within them. So that's all I have for you today. Thank you very much for joining me. Thank you very much for your support on patreon.com slash ljfrench and sponsus.com slash law. This is a community supported legal education channel that would not exist without your support. Thank you for the $50 plus supporters in the month of April. Thank you to Wes Delge, Video Quarantined, John Steele, Gavin Barnard, Evie, Kyle Mudrox, Spirit Bear, Michael Pierce, Jan Negre, Daniel Perez, Aspernari, Joe Tyson, Benjamin Hightoff, Stephen Otta, Cute Grills in Your Area, Longreach Jones, Zachary Cheney, Nicely Done Defense, Mullen PC, Sean McNamara, Josh Baker, Ugly Grill, Gregory, Shiloh T, Michael Moore, and Beastman. I love seeing how long that list is. And this list, the $5 plus supporters, all of you are on the LED panel and in the description of the videos below. I love you all. I'll see you in the videos that drop. I'm Leonard French, your favorite copyright attorney. Have a good one. Bye.